Hi, I'm Claire Shrewsbury, Director of Insights and Innovations here at RAP. Hello, and I'm Keith James, Head of Policy and Insights at RAP. So Keith, we've just published a report on, on the levelling up um, and how circular economy and resource efficiency um, can actually help with that agenda item. Can you just tell me a little bit about the report? Yes, yeah, certainly. So over the years, lots and lots of people have talked about circular economy. So how we can repair, reuse, recycle, remanufacture products. So we make better use of them and then we make better decisions about what to do with them at the end of life. And people have always talked about it in a kind of abstract way. So it's something for the future. I think what's really interesting about our latest research is we've looked back uh, at how the circular economy has grown across the UK and it's really exciting. So between 2014 and 2019, uh, about 90,000 new jobs were created in the circular economy across the UK uh, and it adds about £41 billion to the UK economy in terms of value. Uh, so to give that some sort of context, that's similar in size to the hospitality and food service sector. So it's already really significant and it's making a great contribution uh, to our economy across the UK. So it employs about 560,000 people, um, but those people are employed across the country. So it's creating mid-skill jobs in particular uh, in every region of the UK. Uh, so that means it's leading to a genuine reduction in unemployment across the country. Um, and we've developed an interactive map as well that people can use so they can see how many jobs there are now, but also how many jobs could be created in the future through a more circular economy. So in the report, we, we sort of set out that we looked at data for three different scenarios and the, the biggest one where all the, you know, the exciting more jobs, more uh, productivity, etc. was what we called uh, scenario three. Can you just tell me what sort of things were in that so that that could give people a bit of a flavour of the type of things we modelled? Yes, certainly. Um, so uh, we looked at opportunities to increase uh, recycling, repair, reuse, remanufacturing, rental leasing and biorefining to different extents. Uh, and in our transformational scenario, so that's scenario three, uh, we looked at doubling the amount of rental and leasing that's going on. Uh, so people taking the opportunity to rent and lease more of the things we use less frequently. Uh, and we also looked at remanufacturing where goods are taken back to the original manufacturer and then refurbished to go back into the economy. Uh, so those are two key areas where we looked at significant growth. Uh, but we did have growth scenarios in all other areas as well. But under that transformative scenario, there's the potential to uh, double employment between now and 2030 uh, and add an additional £82 billion pounds worth of value to the economy. And we can do that in a way that's going to reduce the amount of material we need, um, but also reduce greenhouse gas emissions by around 30, 33 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent every year. So it's a huge environmental opportunity. It's a huge economic opportunity, but it's a huge social opportunity as well, because it's creating the opportunity for people to access goods in a way that is more convenient for them. and means that everyone can make more of those. And this isn't just for London, is it? We're not just talking about more jobs in the South East. No, oh, absolutely not. This is uh, across the country, uh, so it can add value and create jobs in every single area of the UK. Uh, if we look at where those jobs are at the moment, uh, for example, in Yorkshire, they're employing over 12,000 people in recycling. In the West Midlands, over 13,000 people employed in rental and leasing. Uh, if we look at North West England, we've got 1,280 people employed in biorefining. There are jobs everywhere. It's a real opportunity. So, I mean, obviously, with the change in, in government looming, um, you know, levelling up may not be called levelling up going forward. And for me, you know, the circular economy and resource efficiency has got something in there for all government departments and, and players, local governments, as well as businesses. And I think it's up to us to make sure we sell that right story and tell the story. So if we're, we're trying to encourage investment we can appeal to the to the sort of um the priorities of, of the actual um investor so is it is it about more jobs or is it about greater productivity so i think there's a real onus on us on us as rap but also others in in the sector to be able to tell that story yeah i completely agree and i think one of the distinctions with what we're talking about is that when we're talking about productivity we're talking about resource productivity so government traditionally focuses on the amount of productivity per employee. Uh, that's always going to be important, but what we're highlighting as well is the opportunity for improved productivity per unit of products that you handle as a business. 
so if we think about the threats to our supply chains, this is an opportunity to do more with the products that we've got and to add more value. So it can address some supply chain risks. It can potentially address the cost of living crisis as well, because you can offer people access to the goods they need, but in a more affordable way. Uh, and it addresses levelling up because it's going to create opportunities across the country. So whether you're a government, a business or an individual, there's something in this for you.